Hope you love high school football because the next 10 minutes are full of it. Welcome to the first week of the playoffs for the Sac Joaquin section. And this is where things get real. It's winner go home, people. And we'll kick things off with our game of the week featuring two teams who have no intention of going home. ABC 10's Matt George has more. Playoff football is here, and for our Pape Machinery Game of the Week this week, we have a Division Four matchup for you. The 12th seed Wood Wildcats taking on the 5th seed West Park Panthers. There's nothing quite like win or go home football. The Panthers took the field looking to build on a very impressive 8-win, 2-loss campaign, while the Wildcats were playing for more than just their season, honoring the memory of head coach Jacob Wright, who tragically passed away in October. Tonight's game would end up being the battle of Wildcat quarterback Kamani Dokes and Panther running back Weston Wade. But we'll get to them in a second. The scoring started early with West Park finding the end zone on the opening drive. Quarterback Jaden Jackson connects with wide receiver Ryan Sisson for six to put the first points on the board. Now you know every time we show a special teams play, something big is about to happen. Mason Johnson scoops up this punt off the bounce and weaves his way through the defense to put the Panthers up 14-0 early. Not a great start for Wood, but a great way to get back into the game is with your defense. West Park looking for a big shot downfield and Jackson's pass is picked off by Elijah Lowey. The Wildcats are awake, and that's when the Kamani Dokes show began. The elusive sophomore is a nightmare outside of the pocket, and he used his legs to give the Panthers' defense fits all night. How about four? Yes, four touchdowns in the game for the young man. Normally a performance like that would seal the deal for a team, but the Panthers counted with their own ace up their sleeve, and his name is Weston Wade. The senior was a freight train all night, plowing his way through tacklers and not stopping until he reached the end zone three different times. West Park's offense goes off in the Panthers' 47-35 victory over the Wildcats, punching their ticket to the next round and a matchup they've wanted all year against the Placer Hillman. I caught up with Wade after his big night. Did I know it was going to be special? Every game is special, right? But I came onto this field not knowing if it was going to be my last game here, so I left it all out there. I never had that, like, emotion before the game, like, wow, we could really lose this game. Like, I feel like our team, if we came prepared, we, we were going to win it. Thank you, Matt. Good stuff there. I want to be Weston Wade when I grow up. Well, I don't know if there's any team who's been as downright dominant as the Endercombe Tigers over the last couple of months. Not only are the Tigers riding a nine-game winning streak, but they've been straight up molly in the competition. And it always helps when you have one of the loudest student sections in the region. Welcome to the campus of Intercom High School in Natomas. Great Division I playoff matchup as the Tigers welcome in the Pleasant Grove Eagles at Elk Grove featuring my former high school football coach, Josh Crabtree. All right, to the game. On Intercom's first play from scrimmage, a little razzle-dazzle. Ricky Cole throws it to Christian Harris, who throws a dime downfield to Lono Chotel. He would be called out inside the five-yard line. Very next play, Ricky Cole says, I'll do the dirty work all by myself. He beats his way in for the touchdown. Ricky drinks milk. Tigers take an early 7-0 lead, and they would not take their foot off the gas in two possession. They recover the onside kick, and a few plays later, Kyle Gorganius takes the handoff, herbs the word, spins the verb, no diggity, no dab. And just like that, it's 14 to zero Endercom. But Pleasant Grove, they ain't going out like no punks. Anthony Solorzano throws a short pass to Nick Trio. Sir Nick getting busy with it. He picks up a nice chunk of yardage. But on this night, the Tigers were too much. A few plays later, Solorzano going to the air, now the ball is deflected, lands right in the hands of Baron Taylor, right place, right time, and good night, turn off the light. Taylor taking it all the way back for the pick six. Endercom goes on to win this one 62 to 17. They will face the Monterey Trail Mustangs next week. Also, shout out to Pleasant Grove. This is a team who won just one game last year, and this year they're in the playoff. Future is bright for Coach Crabtree and his guy. Next, we're heading to Elk Grove, a nice Division II matchup between the Elk Grove Thundering Herd and the Vacaville Bulldogs. Looks like the student section is uh, about to go skiing. All right, to the game, Elk Grove ball. Jeremiah Williams takes the pitch. Jeremiah getting a little jiggy with it. 
He almost takes this the distance before he's brought down. Now this game was a lot of back and forth between both teams. Now, Vacaville ball, Brody Fortunati throws a dart. Look at the diving catch there by Isaac Bubak. Woo! That drive would lead nowhere. Ensuing punt to El Grove. Dylan Archuleta receives it. And if you know anything about the Archuleta boys, they're ballers. Dylan almost makes the house call, but he's brought down. Later on, Elk Grove in the red zone. Dylan takes the handoff. This time, Dylan making sure he reaches pay dirt. Nice touchdown for Archuleta. Elk Grove takes a 6-0 lead, but Vacaville would come back and score 24 in the second half. And the Bulldogs hey, 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 go on to defeat Elk Grove 31-19. Up next, Vacaville will face St. Mary's at a Stockton next Friday. Our next game features a Division II showdown between two teams who know how to get after it. And anytime there's a big game, that's a job for one of our biggest personalities at ABC10, the one and only John Bartell. Johnny Football, take it away. Tonight is the Battle of the Birds, Eagles versus Cardinals. Johnny Football here, and tonight you are about to watch some impeccable highlights. All right, we're going to start things off on the Eagles nest where Cardinals are getting really excited. Watch Armand Thortona swoop in for this easy little touchdown. Comes right at the camera here. Two can play at this game. Eagles take to the air at the next play here. Wide open in the end zone with the Talons ready to take the ball in for a nice touchdown. The Spirit team tells it way better than I do. I saw Robert Garcia going long and Kadem hit it and he got a touchdown! By the second quarter, Eagles really start pecking on the Cardinals. Watch this sneaky catch by Bo Suave strutting into the end zone like he rules the roost. And before we go into this next play, I just want to do a quick little shout out to the Grill Masters. Beef only on this barbecue, no birds. Now in the second half, I thought I'd slow things down. Check out the wingspan on the Cardinals. Nice catch. There was a lot of tweets in the crowd after this play. All right, let's wrap up these bird puns with Kated Pinnock and his high-flying throw. Then the amazing mid-air catch by Jackson Malboro. Ah, oh, that was worth a squawk from the crowd. Del Oro Golden Eagles will take home the win, 37 to 21. Yeah, let's go, baby! All right, that's all from Loomis. I'm Johnny Football. Back to you. Thank you, Johnny Football. Man, no one can do it like him. By the way, Johnny, the next time you want to show video of burgers on the grill. Bring us back one here to the ABC 10 studio. All right, we're gonna keep this show moving. I'm not tired yet. Next, we're checking out a Division Three showdown between Christian Brothers and Yuba City. Thank you, ladies. Our next game takes us to the campus of Christian Brothers, the Falcons hosting Yuba City. Division three playoff action here. We'll pick this one up late in the second quarter. Yuba City going deep right here. Now, the receiver looks like he has the ball, but Isaiah Jordan says, not today, playa. Man, heads up play by Isaiah there. Falcons would take a 14-0 lead into the half. Now to the third quarter, Christian Brothers kicking off. Christian Ochoa receives it for Yuba City. And look, guys, you know we would never show you a kickoff unless something special happens. And Christian is pretty special. He nearly takes us to distance. The only problem is there was a penalty flag on the play, so that's coming back. Same drive, Yuba City's quarterback trying to do something with it, but that Christian Brothers D-line smothers him like gravy on grandma's mashed potatoes. Christian Brothers go on to win this one 42 to 14 next week. The Falcons will take on the Wood Creek Timberwolf out of Roseville. All right, next we're heading to Rosemont High in Sacramento. I guess it was neon night in the student section. The Wolverines hosting the Dixon Rams. As you guys saw by the scoreboard, by the time we got there, Rosemont was up 34 to seven. Here in the second quarter, that's Kitty Hughes taking it in for the touchdown, but won't it, wait up, hold up a minute. Penalty flag on the play, the touchdown would not stand. Dixon ball, Easton Valenzuela throws a strike across the middle and Leo Inglesias comes down with it. Now Rosemont back on the attack. Michael Cherry takes the handoff and this touchdown would count, no penalty flag there, with the cherry on top. Rosemont also getting it done on defense too. Dixon going through the air and Jordan Cardina says, sorry, this is a no fly zone, partner. He almost 
got the interception there, but Dixon would clap back after that. Valenzuela going deep like a good neighbor. Elijah Montgomery there for the touchdown. Dixon put up a fight, but this game was all Rosemont. The Wolverines go on to defeat Dixon 61 to 27. Up next, Rosemont will take on the 12 Bridges Raging Rhinos at a Lincoln.